Throughout this course, I'll be using a standard keyboard. What exactly do I mean by standard? Well, for starters, a keyboard that has a numeric keypad on the right-hand side. It's very important that you have this because just about every lecture, I'm using this keypad. Now, you might think that you can just use the numbers over here or the operators or whatever. You'd be wrong. In Blender, the number one on the numeric keypad is different than the number one over here. All of these numbers have been bound differently. Even the operations, even the, the period or the, the delete key is different than the delete key and the period on this side of the keyboard. So knowing that, you're going to need this type of keyboard. You need a keyboard with a numeric keypad. Now I don't actually use function keys very often, but Blender does have shortcuts that use function keys. Also, make sure you're comfortable using the arrow keys on your keyboard because the arrow keys is another thing that you can use for navigation in Blender. After all, it is a 3D engine and you do need to get around. On this keyboard, I use WASD a lot. I use pretty much the left hand side of this keyboard a lot. Almost all the keys on the left hand side of the keyboard are very, very common. And that's because your right hand is busy using the mouse. Your left hand is using keyboard combinations for the most part. Now there are some exceptions. For example, like if you wanted to separate something, you would use the letter P or use the knife tools K. Those are on the right hand side of the keyboard. But again, those are not things that you do all the time. The things that you do very often is like extrude, scale, select all. These are where these keys are located. Even the delete key is on the left hand side of the keyboard. You wouldn't use the delete key over here or the delete key over here. Instead, they bound the letter X for delete. So they've really designed Blender to be as smooth and as efficient as possible. And the way that I teach it is to use the numeric keypad, the mouse, and the keys on the left hand side of the keyboard for maximum efficiency. Now with that said, if you're using a laptop, you might not have a keyboard like this. Here's a laptop keyboard that's kind of condensed. There's no numeric keypad. There are no clearly marked function keys. These might actually be function keys, but these have iconic symbols on them, not F1 through F12. Look at the arrow keys. They look like they were kind of smashed in here as an afterthought. So this kind of keyboard probably isn't going to cut it. Well, it definitely won't because it doesn't have a numeric keypad. If you're using a keyboard like this and you think, well, I can't take this course, you're wrong. I mean, you can buy a keyboard that's laid out like this for under $10. They're not expensive. You can buy these at a pawn shop for a dollar or two. They're not expensive. Don't use price as an excuse to not get a keyboard. Most of these keyboards nowadays plug into a USB port. They're not hard to install. They're plug and play. All you do is just plug it into your computer. Your computer will easily and automatically identify it and you'll be off and running. If you have a keyboard that doesn't work, replace it. If you have keys that stick, get another keyboard. You need a good keyboard for Blender. In order to follow this course, in order to follow my lectures, you need to be able to have the right equipment. So, bring the right equipment. I'll help you understand Blender and get you off and running. So, I'll see you in the next class.